Alrighty folks, I am so pumped for today. Today's gonna be a great challenge. Hello, hello, welcome back to Adobe Live. My name is Boo Val and I'm going to be your host yet again for the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge. I think it's gonna be pretty epic to be perfectly honest. We are doing movie posters today. It is a challenge uh, theme that I really love to do when trying to share various tips and techniques and methods and things for design with you folks because I feel like everybody has seen a movie poster. Everybody probably has a pretty awesome idea for how a movie poster could be um, and with this section of challenges being themed around our favorite pop culture TV shows, I thought that the movie poster project should definitely be um, kind of a tribute or ode to Stranger Things. So we're going to be using some dark spooky colors today. We're going to be getting into duo tones and doing some cool text effects and stuff. Um, but we're going to dive into it as soon as I show you some of the cool assets that I'm going to be using today um, from the free section of Adobe Stock. Um, also, if you would like to join in uh, with me today, please check the description in uh, the little area below our video player. That is where you'll be able to download your style files and also join the Discord so you could share your work. So, uh, without further ado, I am going to snag real quick my browser window so you folks can see uh, what we're using, um, and then I will get into it. Okie doke. Uh, so let me pop right over here. So this is one of the images I'm using. I am uh, searching in the free section of Adobe Stock today as I was yesterday. You guys can uh, download, license these totally free of charge and use them in your project. So I found um, this awesome picture of a mountain because we are going to need a spooky hill uh, for our piece today. And I'm just going to snag uh, this link and throw that in the chat for you if you would like to snag it. Otherwise, you folks can type in this code, the 35876928 if you would like. And then I'm also using this super cool image of this mountain because, or mountain, of this mansion because how awesome is this? I want to live here. This is a voodoo val type house. This is a voodoo spot. Let me just say, this is great. Um, and since we are doing a spooky movie poster today, I felt like it was perfect. So there is uh, our uh, stock image for our mansion. And those are the two images that we are going to be getting into for today. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, page this down. Um, and this is our starter file for today. Um, it's got a, kind of a nifty, interesting texture and a background that I've created for you folks. If you would like to composite that into your scene today, go for it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and hide our info and description today, however, because we are going to dive into um, our first steps. So I have my images, which I'm going to drag in here really quick. Um, I'm just going to grab my mountain and I'm going to not place it into my file here. I'm going to drag it up here to the um, uh, the bar where you can see all of our different um, titles for the files we have open. And I'm just going to open it in its own file as its own little thing. Um, and the first thing I'm going to do, which I will admit that I have done this um, ahead of time, um, but the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these out of my image. And in fact, I want to make sure um, I open up my file where I've kind of Martha Stewarted you folks. Let me, um, I'm going to pop over to my face cam real quick, just so I make sure that when I open this file, it does not open any um, top secret information. Um, all right, cool. So let's pop back over here. So I have cut these out. Um, as you can see, I've cut these, these, um, these things out. But what I want to do is kind of show you um, how I did this and how you can do it for yourself um, so that if you would like to use different images that I'm using, you kind of know how to do that. Um, and one of the easiest ways um, to kind of do this is just by using the um, object selection tool, uh, which I like to use. You can find that by pressing W on your keyboard um, or by uh, clicking 
the selection tool, right clicking it and snagging it from the drop down window. Um, and all I do is I just drag a box out and you'll see Photoshop will think for a moment. Um, and then it will auto select around what it believes is the object um, on the uh, canvas, or you can also hover over different um, aspects of your image and it will highlight things and you can go ahead and press your mask button like so. Um, so now I have my mountain cut out um, and uh, I also can do the same thing to my mansion. Now the mansion is a little bit trickier, right? Um, because there's a lot of details and stuff going on. This is what I meant about the hover, by the way, when as you hover over things, it'll say, hmm, is this what you want? Is this mention like so? Um, and it will do a little thinking here for me as well. And then it will select it. Um, there's a lot of big details and things um, around on like the tops of this mansion. And so what I did after I um, selected this is I hit mask um, and then I came in on that mask with a brush which I'm gonna grab like a sharp brush make sure it's not on dissolve um, make sure it's set to normal um, and then I just came in and kind of painted this out um, and another thing you can do if you are not using a tablet um, if that's not really how you like to do things is you can come in and do something like this where you can grab your lasso tool right click it snag your polygonal lasso tool and you can come in and actually select things um, just by tapping and grabbing stuff in a straight line and just really kind of clean that up um, now I will say as you move through this poster for the for the style that we're doing today, it's really not 100% necessary to be extra, extra clean with a lot of these details because we're gonna be applying some filters and some textures uh, and cool things that will allow you um, to sort of hide things. And the reason why we're doing that is because we're gonna be compositing stuff together into a very particular style today. Um, and when you, um, use some of the filters and things we're going to be getting into um it's it's easy to like i guess not worry so much about the teeny tiny details because you know that these filters we'll use today will take care of some of that um so i've kind of cleaned up uh the uh the the mansion top a little bit we've got this huge portion here though however that is just not really uh with it so one of the things that i um have done in the image that I've created today is I converted this to smart object, grabbed my lasso tool, and I just started snagging other random portions of the building um, to composite together to create a full version of our mansion. So I'm just going to control J after I selected this. Um, and I can flip this horizontal and just start bumping this over and kind of creating um, the other side uh, of this uh, of this building um, and it's not perfect um, but like I said we're going to be applying so many filters and things um, that it doesn't really matter and I'm really just I'm really just cutting things out and moving them so that um, the if I arrange it so that at least the silhouette of the building looks accurate that will do nicely for us so I've kind of moved that in right there um, I think that I'd like to snag this little piece right here and duplicate that kind of rotate it around and press it right there um, we could even do the same thing with this kind of line this up a little bit like so if I can grab this, let's actually duplicate that um, so that, oops, so that that stays. Um, and I've just kind of started to arrange this in a way that I feel kind of builds the rest of it. Um, and then underneath on a new layer, I'm just going to fill it in um, if I just select a giant portion um, of, the, of the piece here. I'm just going to fill this in um, with a large shape. Um, to make sure that it is whole if that makes sense so i'll just sample grab my paint bucket tool sample a color and i'm just going to throw that in there 
Um, and then what I'd also like to do is I will deselect and I'm just going to control E to merge all these. Um, I also would like to, let's change our uh, polygonal lasso tool to a regular lasso tool. I would also like to cut out all of these windows. We're just gonna control X or command X um, as we select here. And I'd like to empty out all these windows so we can do our own super cool effect um, in our windows. Now I won't be too precious with this because I have done this already, but I just wanted to show you folks um, how I prepared my files today. And if you would like to um, use the same files that I've used, then you know kind of how um, the gist of how I came in and started sectioning out portions and making it ready for the vibe we are going for this morning. Um, you'll notice that, you know, it, it isn't clean as I mentioned. Um, but it's really okay. It really, really is. Um, I'm even going to make sure I get this side because that's what I've done in that other file and it looks pretty good. Um, it really doesn't matter on this other side here if things are messy because we're going to apply some filters and that'll kind of disappear. Um, but I am going to return because I do have my house. You can see that's exactly what I did. Um, I took more care doing it. Uh, maybe not so much over here, but it's a little cleaner because I did have um, some extra time um, to do things uh, when I did my little test, um, but I have these. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna um, close these since I already have my mountain prepared um, and all that good stuff. Oh. I also kind of composited um, the other side of this. I can kind of show that actually because, oh, actually I have my layers already selected here. Um, so what I did here was I masked this out um, and then I snagged this whole side of my mountain um, and free transformed it and put it on the other side, which is, you know, what, I, what I've done here. You can kind of see how that little portion is now over here. Um, and if you just mask things out, kind of bump this over here and you can, you know, come in with your lasso tool and start masking this out. Um, let's make sure we're selected on our mask as I start to mask things. Um, it actually starts to look like a rounded, um, a rounded out mountain, which I really liked. So I am going to snag that and we're gonna bring this over here. It's on the mask, um, which I'm realizing is, hold on, let's go ahead. Um, what just happened was I do have this applied as a mask. So when I selected this and tried to move it over, it only shows visible in that space that I've actually masked. So what you can do here is you can convert this to a smart object, which will allow you to double click and open the layer mask in another file if you would like. Um, but it's going to allow me to grab this and um, uh, duplicate it. And then I can, so now it's on its own layer, um, a, a duplication of it, it's on its own layer. Um, and I can hold control um, and click that hide that layer, come down to my mountain, um, and I can mask from here. I can control select inverse and mask that side out, unhide this side, bring it over here. We can right click flip horizontal, and then we can start kind of attaching this to our other side here if that is what we want to do. Um, but I've already kind of done a version of this. Um, and so now I'm gonna grab my mountain and my house and I'm gonna start bringing them into my file here because we are gonna start getting this uh, show on the road. Um, now, uh, what I mentioned earlier about applying filters to these images to really make them look like they belong in the same scene um, is actually one of my favorite parts of this whole process. So I'm gonna throw our a uh, mansion in here just like so. It's gonna be like the focal point of our um, piece here. And I'm also going to grab our mountain just like so, and I'm gonna free transform that. Um, and I'm gonna kind of put that right here. I'm gonna make it larger and I'm gonna throw that right in there. Boom. I'm also gonna peek at our time here and see how we're doing on time. We're doing great. All right, so we've got our mountain, we've got our house, um, and now we're gonna make these look like they belong together. I am going to um, kind of obscure my background right now so it doesn't distract me from my work just by doing Control or Command Shift N to create another layer. 
Um, and I'm going to grab uh, like a dark, a dark color and just paint bucket that in so I can really focus on what I'm working on here. All right. Um, the first thing we want to do is make this house look like it's sitting on top of this hill. And it looks like I actually need to clean up um, some, some stuff here up at the top. So I'm going to throw a mask on this, grab my brush with black selected, and I'm just going to make sure that I've masked out these little, looks like my selection um, when I did this did not get as clean as I would like, but that is okay because it's very easy to fix it. Um, all right, there we go. Um, so let's composite these together, shall we? I'm going to go ahead and turn this into a smart object again. Um, and I am going to first off, uh, tamper with our mountain here. So I want the back of the mountain to not show through the windows, because if you remember, we cut the windows out, um, of our mansion, um, so that we could do some cool effects within the windows. But with the mansion on top of our mountain, it kind of obscures that. So I am going to select that part of our mountain, right click, select inverse, and then I'm going to mask that out. So now you can see through there. Um, and then making sure I'm selected on the um, layer of the mountain and not the layer mask. We're going to want to select the actual mountain itself. I'm going to come in and just select some pieces of this mountain and control or command J to duplicate. Uh, and I'm going to drag this on top of our mansion. Control T to free transform it. And I'm gonna start arranging portions of the mountain um, over top of our mansion, just to kind of give it the illusion that this is, uh, you know, part of the mountain overlaps with it, if that makes sense. So we're just gonna throw that there. Let's do another um, duplication. We'll drag that up um, on top of our layer here free transform, and then we'll bring that up. And that's actually not looking half bad. Um, you can see it's it, it's not blended 100%, but we can fix that. So I am going to put a mask on both of these, make sure I have my brush selected. I'm going to select a soft round pressure opacity brush, and then I'm going to come in with black on the layer mask. Um, and I'm going to just kind of feather those edges away a little bit. Oops, let's make sure I just painted there. I need to make sure I'm on my layer mask. I'm going to just start subtracting just a tiny bit um, from the edges of this, which will kind of blend it in. Um, and I'm doing this with a stylus. Did that one with a stylus anyways. But I can come in here um, and with my soft round brush, if I make it larger, and click my mouse uh, just a little bit farther away, you can see how I can start to feather the edges of this one in as well. And just make it look, you know, like it, like it belongs. Make it look cool. Um, just kind of composite that in right quick. And that's good enough for me because we're still going to mess with this and um, it's looking good. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is select all of our layers here. And I'm going to right click and convert that to a smart object. So now it's all one piece and we are going to apply sort of a duotone gradient map to give this some serious um, spooky vibes. So with our layer selected, we'll go up to um, image adjustments and gradient map. Um, and I am going to come in here and kind of edit this. It'll apply a random color um, based on the colors that you actually have selected at the time. But you can come in uh, and look at some of these presets if you want. You know, we're, we're going to be working with red um, and blue today, but um, you can kind of come in and check whichever ones you want. Um, I have some that I've worked with over the years that I like, and I'm going to choose one that's like a dark purple and a red. Um, I've also renamed this to September DCC 2022, which you can actually, if you start messing with this and editing yours, if you type a custom name right in here, which we'll just leave custom and hit new, you will see that a new one has appeared. And I'm going to hit OK so I can come back to this and I'm going to make sure I will sit, say, reverse. So that has, you know, put this in reverse and I can just click our gradient map here again um, to do a little bit of um, editing if I want. Um, and I like this. Um, I think maybe I need a little bit more um, blue in it if we want to. I'll select this color and I will bring it up. Um, let's add like kind of a blue vibe in there. I think that looks 
kind of cool. Um, and we can work with this. We can totally work with this. Uh, I am going to kind of bump that down and make sure I get my red back in there. Good enough for me. Uh, and then the last filter that I would like to apply um, is actually in the filters uh, because this is cool. I'm actually going to make our background darker just so we can really um, visualize this right here. This looks cool, this looks neat, um, but I still want to add some texture to it. So what I'm gonna do is with this selected, I'll come up to filter. And we're going to go into filter gallery, which I don't know if a lot of you use the filter gallery. Um, it's something that I don't use super often, but what I want to do is to apply um, like a poster edges vibe to this. And you can do cutouts if you want, um, because cutouts kind of gives it like a, um, like a postery uh, vibe, but poster edges is pretty cool. You can change the thickness, um, you can change the edge intensity if you want, which I want to kind of keep it down. You can crank up the posterization. Um, and I think what it does is it just adds a nice texture that makes everything look like it belongs. We could even experiment with cutout if we wanted, add some more levels to it, which is kind of cool. Um, I want the uh, edges to be super um, detailed so we can turn that simplicity down not bad but we've got a tiny 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 um, amount of or a lot of tiny tiny details here and I don't know if it works as well so I'm gonna keep it with um, poster edges um, and go ahead and hit okay and now we have you can see some of these details come out we've got some thick shapes that are pretty cool and we can start to add a little more detail to our poster here. Um, I think we have about four minutes left, which is just enough time. Um, so I'm going to come in. I know Clarissa was talking in the chat um, earlier about loving the dissolve brush. Um, We're going to spice it up with a little bit of that. So I'm going to um, hit B on my keyboard, make sure I grab my soft round brush, um, and I'm going to sample some of these colors in here. And I'm going to start, oops, let's make sure we're set our mode to dissolve. Um, I'm going to start like kind of daubing in um, some good color here. Um, I'm just clipping, clicking with my mouse, honestly, um, and just kind of trying to add um, some cool, uh, some cool look here. Cool look. That's the, um, that's the professional term for what I'm doing here. Adding cool look. Uh, maybe get some of this darker color um, and just kind of add uh, some atmosphere, you know, a little bit of atmosphere, get that going. I do like having some of this red color kind of come in on the side over here. Um, and what we can also do is create a clipping mask, um, control or command shift N to make a new layer right click and hit create clipping mask and we can start doing this same method to kind of add some shadow on our hill if we want we can throw some some shadow in there just to make it a little bit darker uh, we could also do another clipping mask if we wanted to and um, grab some of this bright red color and kind of brighten that like so, and throw that on a blending mode if we want, just to kind of bring that out. Um, Color Dodge is pretty bright, but I wonder what would happen if we turned the fill down on it. Um, that might be cool. Um, so we're starting to get like this scene um, kind of uh, thrown in here, which is starting to look pretty cool. Um, behind our mansion, I would love to, um, let's make my brush a little smaller. Um, I would love to grab like this bright color here and color our um, our windows in, like so. Um, I think I want more of a red. Let's let's kind of do something more like this, just to make it look like lights are on. Something's happening in here. I don't know what it is, but it's probably crazy. Um, and then you can start uh, kind of getting um, some more, I suppose. Um, graphical elements um, kind of thrown into this. Um, and I have, like I said before, I have done this project previously. Um, and so I will show you real quick um, the basic gist of what I'm going to do. And then I'll show you what it looks like once I finish. So I um, threw some text in. So I'm just going to throw text in right here. I'm using a font called Coven. And I'm just going to say uh, scary movie down here. 
and I'm going to free transform that and just throw that right there. Um, and I'm going to make sure that this is set to a red. Um, and then what I did to make my text glow is not to add like a um, blending mode or anything to it, but just to come in with my dissolve brush and kind of make this look like it's uh, leaking red. Um, almost like, you know, like right around the edges, it kind of like throw that in there and then with a larger brush kind of make a spray if that makes sense um, because I really like it I think it looks super cool um, just like at the corners of my text here to add a little bit of of that kind of glow um, effect to it but in a way that's graphical and flat um, I had a lot of fun doing that, um, so I'll add that in a few places. Um, and then another thing you can do is with the polygonal lasso tool, you can come in and add like some lightning behind your mansion. So if I just grab my lasso tool, make sure it's set to polygonal lasso, I can come in and start doing these great zigzags of, uh, of lightning here and um, kind of paint them in or color them in the same way I colored in a lot of the other elements. So if I want to grab this color and paint bucket that, I can duplicate this and start to, you know, really make this look super horror film-esque. Um, and real quick, I will show you what um, that looks like. Ta-da! Which was pretty fun. Um, I had a good time kind of adding some extra elements to this. Um, but that is all the time I have for you today, folks. I do have to take off. It has been an absolute blast hanging out with you, and I will be back tomorrow morning with another challenge. So I'll see you folks then. Adios, everyone, and happy designing.